Hey y'all, welcome to my local flavor kitchen where today I'm going to make you homemade meatloaf and for dessert we're going to have cherry enchiladas. So come on and let me show you how. Okay, so this is how I make my meatloaf. I usually make this in huge batches for the restaurant, so I've tried to make it a little smaller. So I'm going to uh, make one in this little to-go pan right here. And I'm going to take it home. I'm going back home to Oklahoma tomorrow, so I'm going to take it back home to um, my friends, Roger and Sue, because it's one of Roger's favorites. So this is going to be about four and a half to five pounds of hamburger meat. So this is 80-20. Um, if you like your meatloaf a little leaner, then you can use a little leaner hamburger meat, but I like it to be a little greasy, like that grease in it. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is put a couple eggs in here, and I usually use this McCormick brand this is the brand I use this is meatloaf seasoning already ready for you so you don't have to mess with anything this is the best this I I think this is my favorite um, when they've been out of this before I have used the off brand but this is the one I use now this package calls for one package to two pounds but I always just use one package to and doubled so one package to five pounds will be fine because it is pretty strong so I'm gonna put this in there and then I always put crushed tomatoes in my meatloaf. This can is a little bit of a bigger can, but since you're making a smaller batch like this, you could probably do two of the smaller cans of crushed tomatoes, but I'm not going to put it all in there. I'm going to save some back for the top. So I'm going to put about half of it in there, maybe a little over half, three quarters of it. Save some back. I'm going to do salt and pepper. I'm going to do some oatmeal. Now, I usually eyeball all of this, but um, for the sake of everybody trying to make a recipe out of it, I've try I'm trying really hard to measure everything. So, um, this is going to be about a, a cup and a quarter of Quick Oats. So, I use the Quick Oat brand. Um, well, this is great value, but any the Quick Oats, not old-fashioned oats, but just use the Quick Oats. So, we're going to put that in there. And then, I've already chopped my onions up. Um, and I like my onions to be really um, fat and not diced up so thin because I like it, those onions to stick out of it when you make it so you can see all the onions in there when, when you set it on the table. So mine are really um, chopped up, really uh, coarse, not fine. So a funny story, I am not a chef. I am just a cook. So, um, you know, when I started the restaurant, I didn't know a lot of terms. I just like to cook. I don't know all of the fancy terms for things. And so this guy came to work for me and he started um, to cut up an onion. I said, well, I was telling him about a recipe that we had and I said, well, we'll just chop up an onion. And he takes the onion and he gets his knife and he goes, do you want it to be Julianne or, and he starts saying all this stuff and I'm like, who's Julianne? I don't know who Julianne is. So I don't know any of that stuff. I just know that I've chopped this onion coarsely because I like for it to show up in the meatloaf. Now, here's another trick that I use. Um, I always buy these and keep them in the freezer. And you can also buy um, diced onions like this too. But I love this because it's all the colors of the um, peppers. You got the yellow, the red, and the green. And I buy these, keep them in the freezer, and that way you don't have to worry about running to the store if you decide to make some meatloaf, you already have them. So, I'm going to use my handy dandy Pam Pampered Chef chopper. My voice is still not quite 100%, I'm sorry. So since we're just doing that much, I'm just gonna do about a quarter of the bag. So they're, all, they're still frozen, and this little thing will chop them up pretty good. Look at that. Isn't that the coolest thing? I love meatloaf. Meatloaf is one of, was one of my dad's favorite meals. So I love to make it. The best part about meatloaf is the meatloaf sandwich the next day. So, but you don't like meatloaf, babe, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I, we just had a different girl. I like my meatloaf really juicy. Um, and I guess, and my grandma made her meatloaf really dry. 
So if you like your meatloaf a little bit drier, then put more of the quick oats in there or, oh, and instead of quick oats, you can also use saltine crackers. Just crush those up really good. But I just find it easy just to. I think the tomato sauce is what makes yours more. Juicy, yeah. I grew up eating it in more like a giant hamburger patty with onions and uh, right. oats in it. Right. So I showed you the other day how I put all my trash in here. So that's what I do. I put my trash in this and then I can just fold it up when I'm done. So I've just chopped these up pretty coarse too because it makes it prettier whenever it um, kind of pops out of the meat loaf. <laughs> So, here's my pan, put it in a to-go pan here, and then I'm just gonna mix it up. The crushed tomatoes, you've got your McCormick meatloaf seasoning, got your onions, your eggs, and your oats. So easy to do. So mix it up really good. Not too much, you don't wanna um, keep mixing and mixing until you make mush. And I remember, honest to God, my grandma making meatloaf and taking a bite of it, like to make sure it tasted oh. good. I know, right? And I'll just tell you this. I used to take a bite of it too. When I was a kid, I would take a bite of it. And I loved it. Isn't that funny? It must have had some kind of deficiency. It had some worms or something. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, here we go. And that was, your grandma probably made it with fresh off the farm. Oh, sure, I'm sure. Uh, local not, beef, right? Yeah, not frozen um, peppers, but that makes it, the frozen peppers and the frozen onions just make it easier. I mean, you know, we lived in a small town where when you went to town, you didn't go to, you didn't just run to town. So, you know, I just thought it was easier to have things frozen already in the freezer. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So isn't that pretty? Like, it makes it really pretty. So, I usually make a loaf right in the middle. And it looks like I have enough to make two of these. So, make quite a bit. So, I make a loaf right in the middle of the pan. So, when you cook it, of course you know it's going to shrink a little. But also, when you slice it up, it just makes it even better for your meatloaf sandwiches. <laughs> So right like that, just like that, get that out of the way. I've got enough for another one, so I'll be giving another meatloaf away. Won't that be great? Now, let me show you. And I take the rest of my crushed tomatoes and just pour it right across the top of that. And then I just take my spoon, try to make it drizzle. I know a lot of people put ketchup on it. Yeah, they do use ketchup. And I have used ketchup before. Or I mean, some people wait till it's done and on their plate to add ketchup to it. Right. So, um, and, it, and it makes it pretty when you drizzle some ketchup over there, but that's what I usually do. And then right before I put it in the oven, then I take the salt and the coarse pepper and put it on the top. It makes it really pretty. So, this is what it's going to look like right before you pop it in the oven. And I'm going to show you i guess i'd better get a towel how long do you cook it okay you cook it at 350 for about 45 to 45 minutes to an hour um it depends on you know how um hot your oven gets but i usually cook mine for about 45 minutes to an hour but the last 10 to 15 minutes i take the foil off so i put foil on it pop it in the oven and right before about 10 minutes you want to take your uh foil off so and then take it out of the oven, and this is what it's going to look like. Doesn't that look good? Can you see that? Now, if you like yours a little leaner, of course, you can use leaner meat, but let me get a plate and uh, plate this up. Okay, so we've got a little plate here. Just want to show you how it looks. And you dish it out. And there you are. How pretty is that? And then, um, so of course, if you want it to be leaner, you would use leaner meat. But Or if you want it to be a little more cakey, then you put your more of your oats in 
and not as much of the crushed tomatoes. But I like mine really juicy and that's what it's gonna look like. So now um, you wanna serve this with mashed potatoes or even um, roasted potatoes. You can cut up some potatoes, put them on a cookie sheet, um, spray them with some cooking spray and sprinkle them with a little salt and pepper and rosemary delicious we've had those before at a friend's house weren't those so good yes. and she gave me the recipe we used to have them all the time because i get on these kicks where i make the same thing over and over if i try something but anyway here's your homemade meatloaf everyone will love it and um, now you know me have to have dessert so i'm going to make you a dessert and then we'll see how it all turns out Okay, so we just got through making you some meatloaf, and the reason I made meatloaf tonight is because I had all of the stuff to make it because we were open tonight at the restaurant. Um, we had the Massengale brothers were here singing. We were open for just supper time. So during the winter, um, it is slow season. It's off season here in Branson. Um, but we have decided that we are going to be open on Friday and Saturday nights from 4 to close. So if you are in Branson, in the Branson area, then come and see us here at Local Flavor. We would love to have you. Um, and then we will be opening back up in full-fledged, full steam ahead in uh, March. March 7th will be open back up. But for the meantime, it'll just be Friday and Saturday nights from 4 to close. So we had meatloaf tonight and beans and cornbread. It was a big hit. So I thought, well, I'll just make some meatloaf and show you how I make my meatloaf. And then, of course, you know me, um, we have to have dessert. We always have to have dessert. And I was scrounging around trying to find something for dessert. And I saw a can of cherries. And um, then um, I'm using Greg, I'm using your taco. These are Greg's taco. Um, what are these? Flour tortillas. I, I found these. And um, I have made this before. I got this recipe. You just asked me if I've made this before. I have made this before, but I don't really remember the recipe exactly. But I did get this recipe from my friend Shirley Roberts, who went to church with me. And we share the same birthday. Me and Shirley share the same exact birthday. Um, Which is coming up. Yes, in February 5th. A couple I will weeks. Be, yes, I will be turning the big 5 0. And um, so I thought of Shirley tonight. And if she sees this, she'll probably say, no, that's not how you make them. So I'm going to go by memory, but I am going to add something to it. I know for a fact that there was not cream cheese in it, but you know me, I have to make everything different. But I did find some cream cheese in the refrigerator, so um, I'm going to do cream cheese. So this is what we're going to do. And these are different sizes. Um, so, I think they're different. Uh, and they're different. To, and they're different what brands. Is fajita style, whatever yeah. that means. Different brands. So just to goes to show, you can make uh, dessert out of anything. So um, what I've done is I went ahead and I melted some butter and um, sugar. So this is about a stick and a half of butter and about a quarter cup of sugar. Maybe half a cup of sugar. <laughs> Maybe a half a cup of sugar and a stick and a half of butter and about a tablespoon. Of cinnamon so I've got that all melted together right there and um, so what I'm gonna do I've never made it like this before but I went ahead and I bumped the oven up to 375 so got the oven at 375 and I'm just gonna well this could be a little softer so you might want to soften this out a little more but I'm just going to spread this cream cheese out on these and do it like this and then have some cherries and fill this up already looks delicious huh looks pretty good okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do all of these just like this roll them up a little bit and put them in this little pan here yeah I could probably just eat it right there okay <laughs> so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna drizzle my butter mixture over the top and pop it in the oven and I'm gonna check it, but I'm gonna go ahead and bake them and we're gonna see exactly how long it takes. And um, then I'm gonna just, um, then we'll just get back to you and let you know exactly. So I'm gonna finish all of this up and then we'll let you know exactly how long it t took and then we'll see if it's any good. And we, I think we have vanilla ice cream, right? And yeah. my voice, ugh, I'm struggling so bad right now. I'll be so glad when my voice comes back because I feel like I'm just barely talking. I feel like I sound like I smoke five packs today. So anyway, 
Um, I'm going to finish these up and then we'll get back to you and let you know exactly how long it took, show you what it looks like, and we'll get back right, blah, 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 get right back with you. Okay, so we've got our cherry enchiladas. They just came out of the oven and I ended up baking them for about 25 minutes. So what I did was I um, spread cream cheese on my flour tortillas, which are all different sizes and shapes because they were left over, and then filled them up with cherries, which you can make them as fat as you want. And then I took a butter mixture. I melted some butter, put cinnamon, sugar in it, and then poured it over the top. Now, if you want them a little bit crispier than this, then cook them a little bit longer, but they look just about right to me. So that's what they look like. And these would be great with some vanilla ice cream. So this is, look at that. You can see the cream cheese in there. Now, I'm not sure uh, where Shirley got this recipe, but I'm pretty sure that whoever made this up <laughs> was somebody like me who was like, we've got to have something sweet. And they were like scrounging around the house and they found some flour tortillas and they had a can of cherries. But So I added the cream cheese and um, the cinnamon. Uh, of course, I love cinnamon toast, so the cinnamon butter on top is going to be great. So I'm going to take a little bite. Look at the, Can you see that? Look how good that looks. See the cream cheese in there? So I let it cool off a little bit, take a little bite. We do have vanilla ice cream and um, so... You know, fatty like me, I gotta have some some uh, dessert after supper. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. I'm not sure if this is the exact recipe that Shirley had. Mm. So good. <laughs> but anyway, this is delicious. And um, so if you have this stuff, you want to go get it make a great big pan for a bunch of people probably be even better but this is what we had and i used up all your taco tortillas and you know why i keep this extra weight on so i don't have i do it for you babe so i don't have to beat the guys off i mean <laughs> if i was skinny too good lord <laughs> anyway so we made um meatloaf tonight uh, we made cherry enchiladas for dessert we appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and share um, here at Local Flavor Branson. Come and see us if you're in town. And I've contacted my friend Jarrett Doherty, and I'm going to try to get him to come and do a video with me next week. He is the comedian over at Grand Country. Um, uh, is it Grand Country Jubilee? Or Grand Country, anyway, the Grand Country Music Hall. He's a comedian over there, and he is hilarious. And I can't wait. I hope he can come next week, and maybe we'll make something fun. So um, we'll see you next week. Thank you.